All right. Everyone, thank you so much for joining today's workshop. Really excited to be here with you to talk to you about a topic that I've become really passionate about um, as I've entered into my career. Uh, most recently, the last couple of years, where I've really gotten deep into data visualization and storytelling and I'm hoping that I can use this to teach you something new um, and hopefully inspire you about maybe some some career choices that you may not even know are available to you um, in the future. So today what we're going to do is, this is all a data visualization workshop. We're going to be using a tool called Tableau. So to make sure that you're set up for success out the gate, I want to make sure that you have downloaded a couple of things. First things first, um, you need to have access to Tableau Desktop. We have a 14 day free trial that you can download from our website. I'm gonna copy the link address right now and put this in the chat so you have it. Okay, so if you haven't done that already, start the process to download the trial. You will have time between now and when we get into the workbook for you to have it ready to go. So that's one step. The other step is for this workshop specifically, I've created a couple of files for us that we're gonna use in the workshop. Uh, two files in particular that you'll need to download in this link here. So I'm going to copy the second address. It's essentially just a Google Drive. So in that, you'll need to download the CSV file and the TWBX file, which is basically Tableau Desktop. So I'll leave that just for a second, make sure everyone has that ready to go. I know that many of you already downloaded it in advance of the call, so that's even better. And we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. So just by way of quick, very quick introduction. Um, I'm Amy Prudhomme. I am a customer success manager for a company called Tableau. And our company's mission is that we help people see and understand data. Um, and before we really get started, I'd really like to understand from you all, you know, do you know what I mean when I say data, when I use that term? You can put it in the chat if that's your preferred way to, to communicate. What do you think I mean by data? Okay, information, that's good. Ideas, okay, I like it. Excellent. So data can sometimes be something that feels like it's a complex topic or something that's hard to understand. But really, when you boil it down, it can be pretty simple. So a simple definition that I like to use when it comes to data is it's essentially a collection of numbers. So something that could be quantifiable, words, measurements, observations that essentially describe things. And it can be literally anything like the, I was looking at my dog earlier and thinking okay she has a black and white coat that's something that is observable about her she is one years old that's something that is quantifiable about her that's how I can measure her is by her age she is a mix between a pit bull and a terrier we think so that's another way to categorize my dog Zoe um, who's a one-year-old mix between a pit and, and a terrier all of those things are data points. And essentially, um, the nice thing about having a career that is focused on data or visualizing data, analyzing data, is that when done really well, you can tell really interesting stories. You can dive deeper and problem solve and learn some things that you may have not known before you had your hands on this, this information. So one of the things I wanted to do to start was to show you a quick video. And before I hit play, I'll just give you some context. This is a video from 2003, so it is old. But I love it because it really shows you what you can do with data and how you can tell stories with data to, to uncover something meaningful. So hopefully we'll do a sound check to make sure you can hear. Uh, what's coming through the video, so please let me know if you can't hear as I hit play. So this is what I could display here. 
I put fertility rate here, number of children per woman, one, two, three, four, up to about eight children per woman. We have very good data since 1962, 1960 about, on the size of families in all countries. The error margin is narrow. Here I put life expectancy at birth, from 30 years in some countries up to about 70 years. And 1962, there was really a group of countries here that was industrialized countries, and they had small families and long lives. And these were the developing countries. They had large families and they had relatively short lives. Now, what has happened since 1962? We want to see the change. Are the students right? It's still two types of countries? Or have these developing countries got smaller families and they live here? Or have they got longer lives and live up there? Let's see, we start the world. And this is all UN statistics that has been available. Here we go. Can you see there? It's China. They're moving against better health. They're improving there. All the green Latin American <laughs> countries, they are moving towards smaller families. Your yellow ones here are the Arabic countries, and they get larger families, but they, no, longer lives, but not larger families. The Africans are the green down here, they still remain here. This is India, Indonesia is moving on pretty fast. And in the 80s here, you have Bangladesh still among the African countries there, but not Bangladesh, it's a miracle that happens in the 80s. The imams start to promote family planning, and they move up into that corner. And in 90s, we have the terrible HIV epidemic that takes down the life expectancy of the African countries and all the rest of the world moves up into the corner where we have long lives and small family and we have a completely new world. So that is just a snapshot, just a couple, couple minutes of a video that shows Hans Rosling, the person that was presenting, basically telling a story with data, comparing essentially a mother's fertility rate how many children that she gives birth to, to life expectancy and that change over time through actual animation, live animation in a view. That is visualizing data, that is telling stories with data. And a lot of times what you'll find is someone will show you, so show you a chart, you're expected to just know what it means that you have to have the human element too. So who's interpreting that information? How do you tell the story to make it compelling so that people listen to you, that they see the different options that are available based on what the data is presenting? So just a little bit of inspiration that I thought was a, a, neat, a neat way to start out. But you really came here because you knew that today we were going to visualize data regarding music. So just to give you a little bit more about me um, and why I chose music, I first and foremost, I love music. Um, I have attended, if it wasn't a pandemic, uh, you'd find me at um, different outdoor concerts, at uh, music festivals, you name it. We, I lived in New Orleans for three years, which has this amazing live music scene. Also lived in Austin, live music capital, capital of the world. I love music and I love data. And so I saw an opportunity to maybe dig into music and find out what information is there that I could then visualize or learn more about. Before we get into that though, I wanted to poll the audience again. So on this next slide, I'm gonna ask you a question. So get ready with your chat again. Okay, what do these people all have in common? Feel free to put it on the chat or come off mute, whatever you're comfortable with. Give it a second while people ping uh, some things in the chat. Money. Yes, I think many of these people have a lot of money. That is a good point. Popular songs, okay. Creativity, yeah, these are music, music artists, right? Um, anything else? Any other ways that you would, you would categorize these, these six, well, nine people on the slide? Risk takers, okay. I like it. So the thing that all of these folks have in common is that they are the most streamed, streamed artists of all time on Spotify. So I know that because I wanted to look at the data. I Googled it first. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to try to visualize this. So something that I built was this view. You see some of those names. I had Ed Sheeran, Imagine Dragons, The Weeknd, Dua Lipa, all on there. Um, I also wanted to know over time, what years had the most popular number one hits? Um, I built this because I wanted to dig in more. 
and I made it interactive. So for instance, this year, there were eight all-time top 100 songs produced in April of 2018. I can click into that and it's gonna filter by all of the data, all of these songs and artists that had top 100 songs at that time. The other thing that's kind of cool about this that I learned and thing that I didn't know, which now I, I use as common trivia with my friends and family, is if I dig into this. So one of the things that I had done, I'm gonna hide it for a second. All right, here we go, exclude. So this was the view you saw, just the timeline view on the previous visualization. But what I did was I actually hid one data point because without me hiding it, I had this outlier, this one song, one song out of a hundred that was in the top 100 songs that was before 2011. So I couldn't, I keep quizzing people, you know, and actually I'll quiz you now. Do you happen to know what the, that one song is? You can tell it's from the seventies. What's this one song, or even if you can get the artist, what that might be, just some wild guesses. Just curious if any of you might know. And if not, it's okay. Because most people, when I ask this trivia question, do not know it. Michael Jackson, good guess. It's not Michael. The other thing you have to think of, more data that's relevant is what might have come out. You know, Spotify wasn't introduced, and I don't actually know. I could look that up. Um, and make that something I annotate on this view. But Spotify didn't really come out till recently. It wasn't around in, seven, in 75, that's for sure. Um, so it had to be something that has become relevant more recently um, that would push it up to the top 100. So I see some other guesses, Jackson 5, ABBA, Beatles, all good guesses. Um, the answer is actually Queen. And the song is Bohemian Rhapsody. So I don't know how many of you know the song, um, but the reason, my hypothesis for why this is in the top 100 is not only because it's a great song and everyone likes to sing along to it, but also because Queen, the movie, Bo I think it was called Bohemian Rhapsody actually, came out just in the last few years. That, I have no doubt in my mind that that pushed this song up to the top 100. And the reason why there's 1.3 billion streams of it um, over time. Uh, perfect. And Mike Myers, of course. Yes. I don't know if all of you would get that, that reference or not, but um, a lot of people have contributed to that being a very popular song. So all that being said, I just wanted to show you just with a one question, looking at this and saying, oh, they're all in the top, they're all in the top 10, actually, artists streamed on Spotify. What other information might that provoke me to go seek out or visualize and, and compare? What other interesting nuggets might I learn? Um, it's fun to do it with music data and then trivia, you know, do it, tr quiz my friends or family. But you can imagine all the different applications for that um, in any industry you could think of going into. Okay, so let's go back to um just take another quiz question for you and then i promise we will get into the tool and start playing around with it and show you how to create some cool visualizations so with music what what are some ways what are other ways that we could classify music i'm asking you this to to help rattle off potential data points what what could we look at and visualize that's related to music genre that's great. Is it a country song? Is it hip hop? Um, popularity. Okay, I like it. Any other guesses? Sales. Yes, that would be a, a way to measure. Awards. I love it. Great engagement. Thank you. So let's just show you what some of the ones that I just rattled off. I quizzed my husband and we just rattled some uh, for this presentation. And this is what we came up with. You can group by artists. There's multiple songs, um, albums that roll up to an artist by top charts. So what's the ranking overall? Very similar to popularity that someone posted in the chat. Region of the world. So where, where is this band or artist or musical group based? Uh, where are they most popular? What songs do they have? You can even group by that, um, analyze data just by a song. Like imagine one example is 
um, there's a there's a visualization out there that measures the amount of times a word is used in a song. You can track that number of words in a song if you wanted to. That's a way to get it down to an even more granular level than just the song level. Moods. So on Spotify in particular, in addition to genre, which just popped on the slide, you can also have different moods. So there's actually songs from different genres that may be very similar in terms of the musical notes and composition of that music, different ways you can group the data. Language, so is this in English? Is it in Spanish? Is what, what language is this being represented in? Is it all instrumental? Who's the record label? Uh, there's many artists, albums, songs, all rolling up to one record label, for example. And there's so many others, some quantifiable ones, revenue, you mentioned sales. That's exactly what that would be. How many millions of copies did I sell of an album or a song? Um, how, how much revenue am I getting from the streams? What decade was it in? The length of the song. And of course, things like appearances. So where are they having concerts? Where are they going on tour? That kind of thing. So all of these are essentially data. And you can group this data in different ways. And I, I want to mention this now because it'll come into play when we get into the tool. So there's two ways that we at Tableau like to group data for the purpose of then visualizing it in our platform. So the first is, oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to build it. <laughs> Let me build them all out. One second. OK. So what I've done is I've grouped together some color. I've color coded some data points in blue. These represent what we call dimensions. So there are ways that you can categorize, group together data points, elements. Um, dimensions is the term we use. I purposefully use the, the color blue because it'll you'll see that be the color we use in our in Tableau when we get into it. And then I've also grouped a few things in green, rank, revenue, streams, and length of song. What do all of those have in, have in common? They're, they're measures, they're numbers. So you can aggregate those um, and look at those over um, in any way that you might want to uh, visualize it. So I think we've set some great context to start. And I think we're right now we're ready to build. So for those of you, any of you who may have joined a few minutes late, just a reminder before we get to this point, you need to open up your trial of Tableau Desktop. So hopefully you have that up um, and ready to go. And then you've also downloaded the two workshop files that I linked in the chat earlier, the CSV and the Tableau workbook itself. So I'll just give you one second to get situated, make sure you have everything while I pull over my workbook here. Okay. So this is what I sent you um, in the workbook itself. So if you have Tableau desktop open, you're going to see this view and hopefully it's registered. If you have any issues, um, feel free to put it in the chat and, and we, can, we can coordinate making sure you have access to it because you'll need it for this portion of the workshop. So hopefully you have this pulled up. This is something that I built off of Spotify chart data. And just so that you know where I got it from, let's see if I can really quickly Google this, Spotify charts. There is a website literally called spotifycharts.com and you can search by region. So I just chose the United States daily or weekly. For this, I had chosen weekly and downloaded a bunch that we're gonna visualize in Tableau. And then you can search by the actual week or if you're looking at day, you can search by the day to see all of those streams over time. And all I did was I downloaded to CSV and for the sake of this workshop, like I mentioned, I combined several weeks so we could look at it over a course of a year. So we could see some interesting trends in the data itself. So in case you're curious, I just wanted to make sure you knew this was out there. This is where the data is sourced from. And when you download it to the CSV, it's going to look very similar to the CSV that I had you download just a few slides ago when we pulled up the, the presentation. Okay, so let's get back to Tableau itself. So in here, before we, I teach you how to build this out, um, I want to actually start from scratch. 
So if you could just do a, here, let me click Tableau. If you could create a new Tableau instance, so a brand new window, make sure that's popping up, okay. I'm doing this because the first thing you have to do with Tableau, Tableau cannot do anything on this beautiful canvas until you have data to actually look at. So the first thing you have to do with Tableau is actually connect to the data source. So you have that CSV downloaded to your machine, wherever you put it, if you put it in your downloads folder, if you put it in your desktop, just make sure you know where it is. Because the first thing we're gonna do is connect to data. You can see it in the top left of the screen here. The other place that you can connect to data is on the data source tab um, right over here. So if you're on the data source tab, you can click into, the CSV is considered a text file. Um, so you can click into text file. We connect to a lot of different files, but that's, that's probably the easiest one you can connect to. I already have my Nerdy Girls Summit Spotify chart CSV ready to go here. So make sure you find it on your local machine highlight it, and then hit open or just double click. And what Tableau is gonna do initially is take all of that data and populate it within Tableau on this data source pane. So it's, it's basically taking what would be in a spreadsheet and putting it here so we can alter the data any way we need to prior to starting to visualize it. It's all, I also like this view because it tells me what I'm looking at before I go and start visualizing. So at the end of the day, I'm looking to answer a bunch of questions, but it's helpful to know what my data is before I can even think of the question. And that's sort of the beauty of this platform, this tool, Tableau, is that I can, I'll come up with questions as I go, not even knowing I had them, and then I create something like the view that you were seeing here before. So first things first, um, let's just look at our data. It's not a complicated data set, only a few, seven columns total. Um, and let's just look at what, we're, what we have here. We have week, and it looks like a bunch of dates. Um, and luckily, this, this little symbol here shows me calendar, so you know that this is a date. If for some reason it came over into view and it was showing something like this number icon or an ABC, it's really easy to adjust. So if we wanted to change this to a number, we could. It's not recognizing that because it wants to make it a date. So I'll put it back to date. Or you could change the title of this as well to something um, like date. Why not? Let's put that in like that. Um, rank is, we were looking at that Spotify charts view earlier. It's essentially just showing us this column here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So Every week, it's showing us the top 200. So you'll see that repeat over time. But it looks like it's, it's calculating it correctly. It's saying this is a number. So we're going to keep it like that, not do anything to it. For track, you know, when I was looking at the data, I was like, you know, I really want to just, I just want to call it a song. <laughs> you can te technically use track as the jargon, but I like songs. So what you can do is double click into the name. It'll highlight it. And then we can just type in song. Let's just change that so that it's clear. Artist, I think, is clear. The ABCs, by the way, string is just another way of saying text. Um, so for song and artist, I think we're OK. Streams here is showing up as a number. That's the total amount of individual streams for, that, for any given week that they were on the top 200. So number, again, is the right thing to have here. So I think we're good. And streams is a pretty clear uh, title for that. And then we also have this track URL. So this is going to come into play. It'd be pretty fun what we're going to be able to do with this later. But essentially, this means that we can link to, we can find a way, creative way, to within the dashboard in the visualization we build, we could link directly to Spotify and listen to the music um, as we're building it. So I'm just going to call this, I think, let's call it song URL. Double click in, change it. Uh, that way it matches up to the song uh, we were using here. File paths, this is something really not, we're not gonna use when I was building, when I was curating this data set. You don't need to worry about this column. I'll just say that much. Um, it's there because when I curated it, we had to aggregate a bunch of things and it did that to determine where the original source came from. So you don't even have to worry about it. Um, and in fact, what we can do, 
because we don't want to worry about it is hit hide right here. You could also do that when we get to further down the workbook steps, but let's just do it here. So we're not even having to think about it or worry about it. Okay, so you have the data connected. That is always step one. You could literally pull data from anywhere. If you, for one day, you decided to be fun to take all of the grades you have in every, every class you have um, at school and you wanted to see how you performed over time, if your grades have increased, whatever, and you put it in an Excel spreadsheet or a Google sheet, you can port that in and do the same thing we just did um, by connecting it to Tableau that way. Okay, once you have the data and you have an understanding of what you're looking at, then comes the fun part. We actually can get into starting to visualize. So on the bottom, you see Tableau's prompting me. It's saying, go to worksheet, go create something. So I can click into sheet one here, and I get this canvas out the gate. So this canvas, uh, just so I orient you to how it's laid out, on the left is going to be the columns for your data. So remember how I said blue, the, the blue text on the slide earlier would represent dimensions and the green text would represent measures. I did that on purpose so that it would help us when we're looking at Tableau this way as well, because Tableau intelligently differentiates different data points based on whether it's a dimension or a measure because it, it, it changes the way you might visualize something. So based on the data that we have, just poll the audience, um, what, what is of interest to you? Like, give me a question that you might want to answer. Let me make sure I have the chat up so I can see if you're, when you chat with me. Based on what you've seen that we have access to in the data, is there something that you would be curious to answer and maybe we could build it together? And if not, don't worry, I have uh, an example that I can share. Just giving you a second in case. Okay, how about this? What artists have had the most aggregate streams? Oh, oh, there we go. You're going in the same direction I was going in. What, what artists has the top songs over time? Okay, so let's see. What do we need for that view? You have artist and we have song. You also mentioned time, uh, date, but I'm gonna wait to add that. Artist and song are two things we know for sure need to be in this view. One way to quickly visualize anything in Tableau, it's a drag and drop kind of functionality. So I can take artist, literally drag it into rows, and it's gonna show me all the artists immediately from our data set. I can then take song and drag that next to artist, and it's gonna show me every single song that's been in the top 200 charts for every single artist. But you are really asking what is the top song. So if we interpret that as something measurable like streams, for example, we could take streams, pull that over either into, oops, into columns here. And it's immediately going to populate a visualization, a bar chart for us. I can then sort, if you see these two sort icons the, at the top, I can sort by descending and it's gonna tell me for every single artist who, which was their most popular song at any given time. Another way to do this, I'm gonna clear this out just by doing this, hitting this X button icon that you see here. Okay, another way to do this is through this show me function here. So I'm gonna hit song and I'm gonna hit the control key if you're using a PC or the command key if you're using a Mac and select artist to multi-select. So, and then because we wanted to look at popularity of songs, let's also select streams. So what you'll see on the show me menu is that several different visualizations popped up as options. We had built the bar chart before. When you hit it, it pulls it into the view. If you wanted to look at it as a stacked bar, Tableau will do it that way. We could sort it, mess around with it, and that's gonna show me all uh, the different artists and songs stacked together. We could look at this as this kind of view, uh, categorized by different songs as well. Um, this heat map view here is another option. Pie charts, although 
wouldn't be as useful for this particular view. All sorts of different ways that we can visualize this information. To make this even more impactful, we could put something on color. So there's so many artists in this view that if I, okay, let me take a step back. If I were gonna put some color on this, what do you think I might do? Given what you see on the screen, is there a hint to where I might go next? So one of the things as you're getting used to Tableau that will become your best friend, okay, by circle size, yes. Okay, so you're looking in the right direction. This marks card here is basically the way for you to really make your visualizations pop, to show color, to show aggregate size, those types of things. So what it's showing you right now is that in this view, in this bubble chart, my streams, the sum of my streams, actual song streams, are being represented by the size. So Post Malone had 319 million streams in aggregate over the last year. Um, the weekend had 329 million, et cetera. We could put that onto color. So if I instead dragged, or if I hit the control key, so you can copy it and drag over to color, it's gonna give us not only the size of the circle representing streams, but also the heat or the intensity of the color representing the one who's had the most streams over that uh, amount of time. So this one here, Roddy Rich, is the one that's, th this song, this artist and song combination is the one that's popping up the most um, in my heat and size of the circle, which before having the color there, if I take the color away again, by just dragging it off, then that wouldn't be as easy to see. The color actually helps us uh, see that a little bit more clearly. The, cl the, the cleanest way, I think, to show something like that, artists and songs, if I just double click artists, even you can do that versus dragging, I double click songs, and I say, you know what, I actually don't care about the song name, I just want to know how many streams they had across all their songs, drag stream onto columns, sort like I showed you before, and then here's your view of the top artists over that time. We can even add in labels. So instead of, I don't really know, it's hard for me to see, okay, if I highlight, it seems like it's showing me the data, but maybe I just wanna see it like as a legend at the tip here. I can either make that drag it into labels, so streams on the label like that, or if I control Z out of that, I could also hit this T button here, which adds in those labels automatically pretty quickly. So, this is just an example really quick of how to build that view. Um, for this, these do seem pretty inflated because we're looking at top 200 over a year. Um, I almost feel like I want average instead of sum. So if you need to ever change the aggregation, you just hit the caret, as you see me this highlight over this little drop down menu, and then you can change the measure to anything you want. Let's change it to average and then I'll resort. And that tells a little bit of a different story. So in the top 200, of those who have been in the top 200, Cardi is off the charts um, with the amount of streams that she's had with one of her songs that she's had over the last year. Okay, so this is just a quick example of how to use this. And as you can probably, probably gather, the more questions you have, the easier it is for you to then start to visualize things. So if I care about, let's look at artists to maybe incorporate that date um, thing that you were mentioning before as well. I wanna look at artists with the most streams over a certain time period. I can highlight all of those again by holding down the controller command key, go to show me, and look, it's given me this option to do some timeline views. So if I hit into one of those here, see maybe that's the one I want you can click through until you find what you like I'm going to try this one and it's right now you see that Tableau is defaulting to the year of the date I can hit this little plus icon and that'll give me oh actually let me take a step back one of the things I actually want to do for something like this is do the drop down carrot and change it to this year which is it's going to be probably more complicated than you guys care to to know but we basically have two different types of ways of showing date information. 
you could either show dates, which we call date parts or dates continuously. I'm really more interested in continuous, like how is this trended over time? But there could be a use case for you to, for example, look at all Mondays. Like what do all Mondays look like for a year? What do all Thursdays look like for a month? That is when you would use something like these date parts versus these continuous. But for the purpose of this, let's use uh, the continuous. So I'm getting this year view, but I actually want to get a little bit more granular. So I can hit this plus icon and that, is show the, that shows me a quarterly view. I can go further into month and then even further into eventually what's showing now is weeks um, over time. And if I highlight over these, it's actually going to tell me the artist and their aggregate, the sum of their streams uh, for those given times. Um, so again, if we didn't want it, we didn't care about artists and said maybe we cared about song, we could just replace, just drag over song on top of artist. And that's gonna show me this by song. If I wanted to see this delineated by size a little bit, I could drag streams again onto size. And that's gonna actually make the width of the line a little bit bigger. And I could even do this with color. Like this is gonna be, you guys are gonna shudder when you see this, it's gonna be too much color. But let's say I wanted to see what artists represented each of these songs. There's way too many artists, as you can see. But one of the cool things we could do with this is give me an artist, any popular artist you think um, in the last year. Just name one in the chat. What I'm going to do with that as you're typing in a name is we're going to use, we're going to filter by an artist. So if I drag artist, okay, Cardi. If I drag artist over onto filters and I just hit apply, say okay, and then I'd hit the caret and say show filter. I'm gonna adjust this. It's a little bit easier for me to find Cardi or Megan. Okay, let's see. Let's change this to instead of it being all list of 300 plus artists, let's make it a wild card match so I can just start typing in names. So let's see Megan and it's pulling up Megan's songs. And as I highlight over, it's going to show me the various songs. So Savage hit a peak in the week of April 5th. This is the most amount of streams that Savage had at that time. Um, the remix with Beyonce, isn't that interesting? <laughs> the remix with Beyonce was even more popular once it came out after. So it looks like it first hit the top charts in March. It hit a peak. And then they started to see it drop. And then right when the drop happened, the remix with Beyonce hit. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty interesting. We just did that live. That was pretty fun um, just to test out. So, and again, just an example of how you could play with this or find answers to things uh, that, that you might not know. One of the things, one of the songs I've really loved in the last year is Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. And so I was curious, oops, I need to search by artists, not uh, blinding lights. I was curious about the weekend's general, perfor general performance over the course of a year. And this has to be blinding lights, right? Okay, it is. So they, this song in particular has had, and I just clicked it to highlight over it, has had the most views of all the weekend songs. And I would guess, I put money on the fact that at some point in March, whatever this week is, I bet you, Someone can Google it and check me. I bet you this is when they dropped an album. Um, and I would assume some of these songs were like Heartless and Blinding Lights were songs that were eventually on that album, but were singles before that. And that just, it shows you they've been popular for the whole year. The Weeknd in particular is one of the groups or one of the, the artists that are in the top 100 of, of songs of all time ever streamed too. Just fun fact. Okay, so with all that being said, I just wanted to show you, you know, what you can do just with literally, this is six, six data points, six fields, and we've been able to show some pretty interesting things uh, with that. So part of the beauty of this tool really is about finding these little nuggets of information as you're, you're interacting with it. So one of the things I wanted to do before we, wrapped up and our, I, gave, I gave some time for questions is, okay, also someone confirmed the album dropped March 20th. So that validates what the data is showing us. That's really cool. 
Okay, so really quick, we'll come back to this view. Don't don't erase what you have. Let's go to this uh, the the Tableau workbook that I created, right? So I really wanted to know who are the top songs by artist. What are the weekly average streams by track or song, um, and what those streams were over time? We actually did build this view uh, down here. I'm going to show you how we can build the others, but. One of the things I did that I'll also show you is this is that you'll notice these are three different visualizations all on one view, uh, which we call dashboards. So when if I pull this back over real quick. And actually best practice is to name these so real quick on your original sheet. If you double click the sheet titles like that it'll highlight the text let's just name this weekly streams of songs over time hit enter, it's going to automatically make that the, the header here. I'm going to close out the uh, the filter. So we're showing all and I'm actually going to well, we'll leave we'll leave the color there um, for now. And we can come back to it. Sheet two. This is what are we looking at? Let's make this again some So taking the carrot, go back to some and then I'll resort. This is total streams by or to, let's see total streams by artist and then our first sheet sure we can use this too it's our bubble view i'm just gonna call it bubble view <laughs> to keep it simple you can name it anything um so what you will do next once you have a bunch of these views that you've been building is then you can aggregate them all together and make them interact with each other via a dashboard so earlier we were clicking this little plus button here if I hover over it again, it should pop new worksheet. The one next to it says new dashboard. If you click that, it's going to have a dashboard open up. Let's just call this a uh, nerdy girls success top songs. Every single sheet that you have in your workbook up until that point that you've created is going to show up in the sheets pane here on the left. And then just like we did with the others, you drag and drop. So I can drag the bubble view into view and it'll populate. Or if I if I remove that, you can double click. It'll do the same thing. I double click all of these. It's automatically going to size it based on the size you have in the window. I can close out some of this. I'm like, I don't really care about having these legends in here. We can click over them and close them all out if we don't want them. Maybe I want to keep the artist search. So I can keep that there, but I want to drag it to the bottom. So it's not like taking up too much real estate. Everything is drag and drop functionality and everything can be interactive once you tell Tableau to make it interactive. So what I mean by that is, let's say we want to filter the bubbles and the weekly streams of songs over time by this view here by artist, just by clicking on it. See, hopefully y'all can still hear me. I'm getting a, can you give me a thumbs up? Okay. So what I'm gonna do is when you click onto that sheet within the dashboard, you're gonna see this little funnel uh, button here. If you click that funnel, it's telling you use this as a filter. So if I click this, what it's gonna do is anytime I interact with a view. So let's say I care about, I wanna see what Harry Styles has been up to. If I click Harry's name, the other views in my dashboard are automatically going to filter based on Harry Styles songs because it's all using the same data and it knows to filter by Harry just by me hitting that funnel. I could even say, okay, I want to do even more filterability, get to a next level of granular detail. I could apply that same filter functionality to my bubble view. So in this one, let's hit the funnel in that guy too. And I'm a fan of the watermelon sugar song. Maybe I'll click that one and let's see what it looked like over time. So I can click the watermelon sugar and that is going to filter all the other views by watermelon sugar specifically as well. So you can imagine just how creative you can get with drilling up, drilling down with your data and really start to explore it and, and learn some new things about your data over time. So what we're gonna do, let me see if I have a time check what do we have about 10 minutes left team? Okay, I'm going to try to quickly build us the, the view that I have in the other workbook. 
we're going to try to build recreate this together does that sound good okay so you can do this if you want in the in the new workbook you were using or you can use the one that has sort of the cheat sheet that you can keep referencing we can use this too so one of the things just real quick that you'll notice about this where are all my sheets like where are these existing so if i click into this i could say go to this little uh this icon here above the funnel view i could say go to sheet it'll click into that and it'll take me to that sheet you didn't see it on the bottom because what i had done if i click out of this and i go back to the dashboard i actually hit it so that i took up less space um on on the bar at the bottom so if you want to unhide all sheets you just right click uh whatever that dashboard is unhide all sheets and then you see me being sneaky these are where my my views are uh, that i've hidden from you <laughs> so let's hide them again uh, so we keep it clean and let's just really quickly speed through uh recreating these so um first things first number of top 200 songs by artist so i'm going to hit the button this plus button to create a new sheet i'm going to label it top 200 songs by artist i'm going to say version two that way because it won't let you duplicate the same name and i know so i i know what i'm trying to do top 200 songs by artist artist i definitely want in the view i want uh oh look i've created this number of songs in this one that seems like it might be promising so let me highlight over that guy too and i think that's all i need artists and top 200 songs so if i hit show me if i want to use the cheat sheet i can click that bar chart sort it like i showed you before and voila we have that view that was created here only difference is some formatting things we need to add the label so let's take the t i showed you before click that that means that little uzi vert 39 songs in the top 200 over the last year the baby 33 and so on that's what it's telling us it also we'll do the formatting we'll go back to like making it the good color coded spotify colors in a second but right here you're pretty much getting the same information that we have here so really quickly we were able to replicate that let's do this next one weekly average streams by track okay i'm going to create a new sheet again weekly average streams by track let's call it v2 again and again okay i'm thinking of track so in this one i hadn't changed it to song to make it a little bit more clear so i know to look for track i'm looking for streams so the quantifiable i want is this streams button i know i want those instead of using show me though um and cheating with this method i'm going to go back and instead i'm going to try to drag or just double click so weekly average streams by track i want track so i'm going to double click that and then i want streams i'm going to double click that it showed me in a number that was what it did automatically but if i wanted to quickly change it all i have to do is either drag some of streams from the mark shelf into columns or i can drag i can adjust this automatic uh actually no i have to do it the way i told you before uh like this we sort again we add the label oh but wait average streams not some that's why it helps to title it before so you know what you're trying to build so do this with me hit the carrot adjust this to average resort and you have the same view that we have here that we've created just with slightly different formatting okay last one which you should already know how to do this one because we started to do it in the other view average streams by song over time quickly create a new sheet Let's see weekly songs over time average weekly streams by song over time one more v2 wording okay okay again streams i want date because it's a timeline i want streams and i want song so let's do the show me again date song is track in this case and streams show me how to make it work here we go 
We're gonna have to change this again to our continuous versus our date part. And then I want it by week. I want a more granular view. Here we go. And then like we had done before, I wanna make streams, indicate stream intensity by the size. So let's take streams again, populate that over size, and I've basically recreated that view as well. So all of these, I could put in a dashboard, but before we do that, let's quick, I'm gonna quickly show you how to do some fun formatting things as well. So with this, what I'm gonna show you, what I'm gonna do, it's gonna be kinda, let's see if I can drag this over to show you. I'm going to use the Spotify charts that we had up earlier to help me color code this, because we can use what's called like an eyedropper to get the exact color. So what we're gonna do is, Oh, average weekly streams is reflecting some. Let's see, thank you for that call out. Is it this one or? Oh, thank you. See, that's why we have people. Thank you for being so engaged. Thank you. We got to change it on both. Great job. Thank you for calling me out on that. That's perfect. So let's do the formatting here. What you're going to do to format a worksheet, drag this a little bit is you go to the top menu bar, it says format at the top. You see something called workbook, um, but we actually wanna do, workbook will adjust aggregate changes across the entire uh, workbook settings. We really just wanna look at this particular sheet. So we go down to shading, and then you're gonna see this menu bar pop up on the top left that'll allow us to then start to format this. So let's say we want everything to be a background color. I already have these Spotify colors ported in, but I'm going to show you how to do this because um, you won't have it. Actually, you probably will have it on your end if you're using the original workbook. But hit the drop down, go to more colors, and then you see this eyedropper here. Click the eyedropper. And I want to use like this, not black, but like this gray color that Spotify is using on their charts sheet. I'm just moving my mouse around the screen and highlighting over those colors. So I found that one, I hit okay. It's automatically gonna change the background for me. I then want, um, I want all my text to be white because it's really hard to see. So over here, if I go to the A, that's how you change your text. Hang on, uh, get that wrong, text. Okay, here we go. In each of these, the default for the worksheet, let's adjust it to like a white color or gray, whatever you think makes sense. Um, that looks a little bit clearer. And then we'd have to change the header directly as well, I think. Yeah, that's gonna make us do it at the top here. So the header, double click in there. You can highlight over, change the formatting to that whitish gray color, hit apply. It'll pop a little bit more. We also can remove the grid lines if you go to this box here, uh, we can, or this lines here, we can remove uh, some of these grid lines as well. So you don't see them in the view. Okay, and then I want to get this blue to be the green color. So in the marks card, click color, you see the blue that it's already showing, we could adjust it to anything we want. But I want the Spotify green. So I'm going to click um, into more colors again, use this the dropper, and I'm gonna grab the green right over the logo, hit okay, and then boom, I have my, my Spotify green color back. It's still a little aggressive, so what I did when I created the view was I double got into color again. Let's see, actually, sorry, we have to make color be popping in the view. So what I did was, in addition to having the size of average streams be something indicated, we also make it a color um, mark as well. Drag streams on the color. So you can check me. Let's make it be average again with a carrot. And then again, I'm going to change that color to, I lost my Spotify menu. Don't worry, I have it somewhere else. I'll just grab it from my icons here. My, my green, hit apply. And then it's going to show me more of a range. So the intensity again of the color and the width of the bar is showing me something a little bit more visually appealing. So you can imagine taking all of these after you have um, colored them all one color, 
you pop it onto a dashboard. Something else you can do, it just may require a few extra steps. If you right click the format that you like, hit copy formatting, and then you click one that you want to adjust the formatting to, right click, paste formatting, it's going to change it as well. But you notice it didn't change everything. So you will have to go back and double check. So like, let me change the title and things like that. You may have to play with it just to make sure you get it to exactly how you want to display the information. So I can do that again here. Paste formatting um, gives you the general sense for how you could do that fairly quickly. Then one more quick thing I want to show you. Once you have your sheets, you go again to dashboard and you just drag them in. So you want to look at all your views. I'm just dragging and dropping into the view where I want these things, the bottom there. You can close this out. The dashboard is by default white. So I need to go to my uh, layout. Actually, sorry, dashboard format here, dashboard default. I want to make it that gray that I had before. And that way my whole dashboard looks like that. Um, again, if I wanna add that filterability, I just click my funnels throughout. I can do it for all of them if I wanted to. So like, what's this, the box, okay. Um, it's showing me things that otherwise I wouldn't know were even things I could look at. Um, and one more fun thing I wanna show you that we can do. Okay, Spotify, search, search on Spotify, okay, bear with me one second. So one of the things that I have pulled up is this URL, openspotify.com slash search. Basically, anytime I search for an artist, so uh, let's say, or a song. Um, so again, I, I told you I liked blinding, blinding lights. What you see what's happening at the top here in the actual URL, it's always going to keep open.spotify.com slash search. And then it changes the remaining part of the URL based on what I type in. So this tells me this is an opportunity actually to create what's called a URL action in Tableau. So if I hit copy, I'm just going to copy and paste, uh, control C, command C, that first part of the URL. I want to show you something else that's pretty cool. So in what I want to do is if I click on one of these songs, I want it to immediately take me to that search so I could play Spotify like straight from the from the workbook. So if I go go to this sheet, you click into the worksheet and just head back into the sheet real quick. The way we're going to do this is through what we call a URL action. So what you can do to do this is go to worksheet in the top you see something called actions, hit actions. We're going to add an action here that says go to URL. And I only want to do it, I need to find the right sheet. I think it's just the one that I have highlighted here. Okay, average weekly streams by song. Oh, that's not the one I want. I want weekly average streams by track. This one is the one I'm currently showing. I want the name of this to say search on Spotify, something like that. That's basically what the hyperlink will show. For the URL, I'm gonna paste in what I copied from Spotify before, and then I'm gonna have Tableau smartly render the name of the track, the name of the song here, by hitting this arrow and hitting the button track. So this is going to dynamically pull in whatever track I've selected and pop up a URL taking me straight to uh, to Spotify. So I'm going to say OK. Hit OK again. Now, if I wanted to, again, we'll use a different song besides, uh, let's use, uh, I really do love Blinding Lights. I'm going to make, I'm going to close out the other one so you don't think I'm cheating. It's gone. I love that song. That's cool, y'all. Clicked into it. Search on Spotify is now a URL that popped up for me. When I click it, this here pops up. It searched it for me, blinding lights showed up. I can even play it straight in um, live, straight from the, from the Viz. So just some really fun stuff 
that you can do just with like sit, seriously some simple simple data sets and i know this was kind of a flyby and there's a lot of things in tableau i haven't been able to show you in depth um, but this is just a teaser and hopefully you know it intrigues you to learn more about tableau and and potentially use it with some of the data that you're interested in uh, visualizing over time uh, the one final thing i will tell you is if you have a a student a, a student email address so like an edu.edu email address one of the things that we at tableau offer to students is something called tableau for students and essentially what it is is it's free it's free tableau desktop for a year it also comes with free e-learning so even though i gave you a short glimpse like an hour of what this is all about Tableau for students means you get access to it for a year plus e-learning to actually train you up. You could become an expert basically um, with all this free training. The really easy way to do, I'm gonna give you this link here. I'll paste it in the chat. And all you have to do, get Tableau for free. If you click that, it's gonna pop up a, a window for you. You fill out this information. The main thing is that you have to have a student email address. That's how we verify that you're a student and just not a random person uh, trying to get free software. <laughs> and it gives you access. And the great thing about it is you can keep renewing it every year. So when you're done, you go back in, you request access, because as long as you're a student, you will always have access. So if you start it today as a high schooler, then you can use it. If you choose to go to college, you can use it um, at, when you're getting your university degree as well. Um, basically free access to a tool that typically would be something you'd have to pay for. So with that, that pretty much wraps it up. I want to, um, I know we are over time a little bit, so I apologize for that, but is, is there, are there any questions from the group or feedback, anything like that um, before we wrap? 